Well, we could try putting a good conductor, like a metal reflector, with a large reflection coefficient on one side of the hybrid helix. The metal reflector could limit the radiation to that side of the antenna. It's like here. This would be a metal reflector. If this metal reflector is in the near field of the antenna, say within a wavelength, the reflector will actually change the radiation characteristics of the antenna. For example, we could add a reflector with a parabolic shape. Here's the front view. And over here is the heating pattern that the antenna with a parabolic shaped reflector could create. You can see here there's quite a bit of radiation leaking around the sides of the reflector towards the back side of the antenna in this direction. So maybe we can play around with the shape of the reflector to see if we can limit how much of the power goes in the backwards direction. For example, maybe we can try out a spherically shaped reflector, which goes around more of the radiating hybrid helix. Here is the heating pattern for the antenna with a spherically shaped reflector. You can see we've reduced the amount of radiation going in the direction behind the reflector. Perhaps there is more we could do to optimize this antenna radi radiation pattern, but this would be a good start. To finish up this design challenge, I want to mention that the design ideas we've been discussing have been studied and developed over the last three decades. Researchers at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in particular were the first to take the idea of heating up tumors all the way to clinical trials. They started much as the way we did in this class, by considering simple scenarios and simple experimental setups. In the 1990s, they even used a microwave as a source, and they used World War II era waveguides and handmade antennas. Today, the technology has advanced enough that doctors throughout the country can kill tumors by heating them up during a procedure that takes about one hour. The ablation part itself, where they heat up the tumor, takes about 10 minutes. Since the procedure is very non-invasive, they only need to monitor the patient for one day, and complications, if there are any, are usually minor, and the success rate is high. You can see a picture here of some doctors at the University of Wisconsin performing this procedure. You can see that they're looking at a computer screen. So along with developing the antenna and the transmission line, a full system would need to provide a way for the doctors to see what they're doing. This might be accomplished by sending a camera up through the catheter alongside with the cable. Another option, and the antenna. Another option might be to use a handheld ultrasound machine on the outside of the body. Take a few minutes and look back at the very first notes you wrote in your in-class project notebook for this design challenge. What did you write and how does it compare to what you know now? By the way, if you want to know more about this technology, some keywords you can use to find articles or microwave ablation, microwave ablation antennas, thermal ablation, and so forth. Okay, well, we just covered how an antenna works, and we have one outcome left for this class to cover.